Hello, welcome to the Eating Knits Knitting YouTube channel. My name is Emily. I'm based in Orlando, Florida, and today is not a regular podcast episode. Um, instead, I think I'm going to share with you some of my favorite knitting tools. I've been trying to record some kind of intro, get to know me type deal, and it's just not working. So I pulled out some of my favorite tools, and I think we're going to go with that instead. So let's jump right in. I'm going to start with probably one of the most important besides the yarn is the needles. Um, so first I'll just take you kind of through my needle journey. This is what I started with. These straight needles from Michaels, plastic. Um, the first needles I ever bought and yep, hate them. <laughs> I hate straight needles. I'm a 100% uh, circular needle person. So yeah, don't use these ever anymore. I just pulled them out for the sake of this video. Um, second set of needles I bought actually weren't these but they're very similar these are just a 16 inch set from amazon i had mistakenly purchased the 40 inch circular needles because i didn't realize the different cord lengths um so i bought these so i bought those and then i bought these after that um i recommend them for a new knitter but they break right here um, where's my camera right there? They break right right here and you sometimes have to sand it yourself because there's a where the cord meets the wood needle there's like a it's not smooth so sometimes your yarn will snag on there and um, so sometimes I've had to sand it myself and a lot of times it just eventually breaks so I recommend these for beginners but if you're a long-term knitter or you want these for a long time these are not probably not going to last you. Which leads me to my favorite pair of needles, the Chowgu Interchangeable Needle Set. These are the Chowgu Red Lace. Um, it's the full set, so it goes from a 2.75 millimeter, which is a US 2, up to a US 15 or a 10 millimeter. Okay, so pause, I forgot this. So right before I, or shortly before I purchased this, um, I was finding I used six and a half, I was making beanies all the time. And I found that I was making, um, using the six and a half millimeter and the, what did I say, 10 millimeter all the time. And those sizes had broke, long, long broken in these wooden sets. So I wanted something more durable. And I purchased these. So these are the, like I said, those needle sizes in the 16 inch in Chowgu, but they are fixed needles. They're not interchangeable. Um, but I really enjoyed working with them, but they're probably like 10 to $15 each one so I didn't want to continue buying different I didn't want to continue buying these fixed needles so I looked into interchangeable needle sets and I think I found I'm so glad with what I purchased so these are probably hundred and five dollars or so at the time and I think I bought them in 2018 and it's 2022 so it lasted at least four years at this point and I don't see them I don't see any signs of wear. I see myself using them for a long, 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 long time. So I think they're an amazing investment. Um, you get the needle tips and there's even, I just realized like a little bit of space. If you want to buy more needles, you can um, just kind of put them in more spots, if that makes sense in your case. I think the case is pretty. I know some people don't like it, but to me it's pretty and nice. Um, and then it does have this little zipper, zipper pouch here which I store all kinds of things in. So, um, Moonlight, my cat, I'm watching her. She's opening doors to our, of our, uh, under our TV and stuff. So, in our TV stand. <laughs> um, so it comes with this. These are all the needles. It comes with small, the smaller sizes and the larger sizes have separate cords. But for each, it has an 8 inch cord, two 8 inch cords, a 14 inch, and a 22 inch. Um, so I think it's a, a good amount of cords. And then you use um, these guys to secure the knitting needle onto the cord so that it stays secure and doesn't twist off while you're knitting. Um, and then last year, which all of that, everything it came with was totally sufficient for what I needed for a long time. But last year I made my first shawl, this one here, and I found that my cords were, my knitting was super scrunched. So I went ahead and looked up 
longer cords. So I got a 50 inch and a couple of 30 inch cords. Um, so I just bought these on Etsy from an Etsy shop. And then I also bought like some cable connectors and some even tinier needles in case I ever wanted it socks or something. Um, so you can definitely buy the accessories separately on Etsy and they'll work with the set you have. Um, so yeah, and then it comes with like some different things. I just have this, it comes with stitch markers in different sizes. So those are great. And there's even a smaller one there. I already showed you the little contraption that makes the needle stay secure on the cord. These are needles, needle stoppers, stitch stoppers, I don't know. But you um, screw them onto the end of your cord if you need to use your needle tips for a different project or something. So that way it, they stay. And you don't have to put them on waste yarn. I find that very convenient. So overall, I highly recommend this set and spend six minutes of me chatting about it. So I'm gonna move on, but I highly recommend Chow Yu Red Laced Interchangeable Needle Set. But really any interchangeable needle set, if you're gonna be an active knitter who, um, I think it would be great. Oh, now she's playing. So hopefully if you hear her ball winding around, that is Moonlight playing. Um, okay, so most important, in my opinion, those are, those are done. Then I also have this. This is just a bag. Um, I think it's like a makeup bag actually, but um, of knitting tools. So these actually I bought kind of when I was making things to sell, but these are from All This Wood LLC and they're cork labels that say EB. So those are my initials and you just can sew them on to your garment or your hat or whatever you're making. And it's got a personalized touch. These are cork labels. Um, and I have ordered from All This Wood LLC based in Washington for, I don't know, three or four times. And they've always been so kind and so amazing. So I highly recommend them. Um, let's see what else. Oh, I have another bag of kind of tools. I, I have just these plain boring stitch markers, which, you know, for stitch markers, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. I've got my massive embroider or sewing needle or whatever from, um, this is from a knit collage cow. Then I've got, you know, more in here. These are probably things every knitter will need. And then I've got a couple of tape measures. So like, this is also from a knit collage cow. If you're ever interested in knit collage, they have amazing ex extras in their kits. So. There's that one, and then just a regular tape measure. They serve the same purpose. They're just both in here. I always keep a little bit, this is, I think, cotton, but keep a little bit of scrap yarn so that if I ever need to put anything on waste yarn, I've got it in my bag, easy. Um, a pair of scissors. You can get pretty scissors. These are just small enough to fit in the bag. I have a fork from when I was making mini, 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 mini pom-poms fork was what I wrapped the yarn around. Um, I have a, I have double pointed needles here. I bought these for my first ever hat because they said needed them, but I barely have used them since. I'm not a fan of double points at all. Um, some more scrap yarn. This is another item from Knit Collage. It is just a two inch ruler and you can hook it onto your bag. Then I have a crochet hook. This is again from Knit Collage, but I have other crochet hooks since then. Um, but you, I think crochet hooks, this one's too big, but other ones are really good for if you drop a stitch by mistake, just picking it back up. Um, I think it's a nice tool to have, but you certainly don't need one. You can fix a drop stitch without a knitting needle or a crochet hook if you want to. But, so I was talking about um, stitch markers. Like I said, you definitely don't need pretty ones, but if you're gonna be knitting a lot, like why not, right? So these are my first pair of really pretty stitch markers. These are from Hello Lavender. She is based in Illinois and she, oh here, I'll show you this because I have their website. HelloLavender.com. She makes gorgeous clay stitch markers these are from her No Waste collection. Again, they're just the same. 
just so pretty. And then these are ones that I haven't used yet. This came with a project bag that I purchased. And again, just fun, pretty stitch markers from a maker in Illinois. I just think it's so nice. It just, every time you come to it, it, you know, is exciting. And same thing, I don't have any, um, what are they called? Like those lobster claw things where you hook them on your knitting and then progress keepers. I don't have any progress keepers, but the same deal. You can get a really, you can get a simple one or a really pretty one and hook it on your knitting. And it's just so cute and fun to see, especially, you know, like me, if you're a knitter who knits every day or all the time or not who cares anyone can have them so definitely not a need but super fun and cute to have um okay so what else did i have those are my needle set this bag i pretty much carry around with me wherever i'm knitting i throw this in whatever knitting bag i'm using for the most part and then this goes with me a lot of places too those are the two tools that i use a lot so i guess let's talk about knitting bags I'm not someone who has a lot of project bags. I pretty much use whatever bag I have on hand. I got this a few years ago for Christmas. It's a bag that says Probably Yarn from Deb Rose. Um, so you could use something like this. This is a big feed bag. We not, have, not doesn't have to do with knitting at all, but just use these. Um, I use reusable shopping bags, but I do have one official project bag. So this I bought from Yarnify in Chicago. It's really cute from that maker with the stitch markers. Hey Illini, I think it is. Let me pull it out again just so I know for sure. Stashem slash Markums, handcrafted by Leslie Sh Schroeder, hey Illini at gmail.com is her website. So these stitch markers came with the bag. So Look at this, my first official project bag. I think it's so cute. Um, it's so pretty on the inside too. So I have a product that I haven't worked on in a very long time in here. Um, <laughs> but you can use anything for a project bag, but really, again, just something really cute is also fun to carry around with you. And this is nice, it's, it's very, um, this is very portable. It's not bulky or anything. So I have a lot, I want, some others knitting bags that I would love are from Jody Brown, Mrs. Brown's bags from the Grocery Girls. I love her, um, the print, the the stocking that stitch print on a lot of her bags, and um, I Heart You, based another one based in Canada, and I just think I love her podcast. She seems so kind. I love her. Um, she's trying to use high quality materials, local materials when she can. So. I love those those um, ethics align with mine, so I like to support people like that. And I'm sure there's so many more people that I would love to purchase from and support, and I hopefully will down the line. Um, a few more things I have out. This is, when well, it's really getting active now, this is the Soak Wool Wash. And this I've, been, I've had for probably a few years. You can see I haven't even used half of it yet. Just what I use to block all of my knits. And this is the scentless option, but they have several scents. Um, yeah, so it's just like a wool wash, a fancier laundry soap, should you say? And I really like specifically wool wash. There's this brand, I know there's some more, Eucalyn, there's other brands out there. Um, but what's amazing about this is you um, don't have to rinse it out. So you would let your garment soak um, in water with this. And then you don't have to like rinse, do a second or third rinse and make sure the soap is all out of it. So that's why I like this a lot. Um, this isn't a knitting tool, but well, I'm kind of confused on if this is effective or not. But these are lavender sachets, and I always heard that lavender sachets repel wool moths. However, I recently, within the last year, watched a Whiskey and Wool episode where she had a moth infestation and talked about all her research that she did. And she mentioned that she had read that these actually don't prevent moths and they can bury in here and hide. So I don't know what the answer is. <laughs> um, so I still have them in, with some of my wool and I, I mean, they're only effective right 
supposedly only effective for animal fibers. Um, so I don't know. I had these in my sprinkled around my stash, and then I've kind of been taking them out. I don't know what the answer is. Um, <laughs> Moonlight's so crazy. Oh, and my final, I think those are like the majority of my knitting tools. So my final knitting, t my finding, final knitting tool that I know isn't accessible to everyone that I'm about to show you is Ravelry. So this is my project page and I am always updating it. I think it's so helpful to keep track of my notes electronically and the yarns that I use, how much yarn I've used. I've got, um, I like to take pictures of all my makes. I just really like looking at my project page, seeing how far I've come and like I said, keeping track of when I start something, how long it takes, how much yarn I use, any notes I have, if I want to knit it again. All, pretty much I'll take a whole bunch of finished object pictures and then I just upload them to Ravelry so they're all in one spot and then get rid of them um, off my phone. So yeah, I think that's the summation of my knitting tools. I grabbed everything and more and talked about everything and more and that I use for knitting on a regular basis. I really just keep all of my, like here, this is a pretty much a bag, oh my god, I can show you. This is a produce bag, but I have a project in it, oh yeah, it's a little shawl. So this, I showed you this feed bag, and the way I organize my stuff is I pretty much keep, I have boxes of my stash that I'm trying to stash down, and then in this bag I pretty much have a collection of all of my projects. And then whatever I'm currently working on the most is in a separate bag where I can just grab and go. But everything else is kind of in its respective um, bag or whatever. Like, here's another bag of a cardigan that's, you know, chilling. Here's my fiber that I'm spinning. So um, pretty much everything goes in this one larger bag. And then the project that I'm currently working on will go in a more portable bag. And then everything else, like I said, hangs in that other bag. And that's how I organize, for the most part, my whips and FOs very briefly, but there's no big organization to it. As far as my yarn stash, if you care, obviously yarn is another massive tool that you need for knitting besides the needles. And I have a box, pretty much, of cellulose fibers. Well, I have a box of acrylic that I'm trying to get rid of. I have a box of bulky wool that again I'm trying to get rid of and then I've got a bag of um, what I want to be my yarn stash like right now it's full of yarn and in the future I want just that to be my yarn I don't want to have the extra or excess skeins outside of it um, I want to keep it in that one bag so that's manageable and not overflowing the entire house so that is my goal for 2022 is getting rid or stashing down or using the yarn that does not fit in that bag and the rest of it either be sold, be donated, or be used up. Okay, that is all of my knitting tools. Let me know if you have questions. Let me know if you have recommendations and what you use, what your favorite knitting tools are. And thank you so much for being here. Again, my name is Emily. This is the Eviness Knitting YouTube channel and I'm so glad you're here and I'll be back in a few weeks.